Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today it is going to be Quake for the PC, specifically Episode 5, Dimension of the Past, aka DOPA, which was released back in 2016, I'm assuming uh, in celebration of Quake's 20th anniversary. Quake came out in 1996, uh, it was packed with uh, four episodes, uh, and then I had a couple of expansion packs after that, and uh, again, this is quote-unquote episode five, DOPA, or Dimension of the Past. Um, I want to thank first off uh, a few folks that were on uh, some recent Doom and Quake live streams of mine uh, suggesting this episode. Uh, now, this came out a couple years ago as of, you know, doing this video, and I hadn't bothered to check it out. I'm a huge fan of the original Quake. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Um, I've got a lot of uh, Quake content on this channel, as you can see, and I've also played a ton of multiplayer back in the day, so much that I even just skipped Quake 2 completely. I just went from Quake 1 to Quake 3. That's how much I played the first Quake back in the day and um yeah, you know, I actually really like this episode. I think it's pretty solid. I don't think it ousts anything that, you know, id Software did in the first four episodes, but it still fits in quite nicely. It's got the same aesthetic. Um, it's got the same type of map design, things like that. It's got some cool tricks and traps that'll definitely cut you off guard at first. And overall, it's solid. There are a couple of uh, nitpicks I have, like when you beat it. Um, uh, there's no ending sequence or anything like that. Uh, so for something that's billed as quote unquote episode five, uh, for there not to really be any story or anything like that, uh, is kind of a bummer. And also, uh, the, the last level I, I'd say just ends kind of abruptly, but you guys will see exactly what I mean. There's also some relatively predictable enemy placement and things like that, but you know, the more I've gone through the episode, the less that has really like stood out to me. Um, because the more you get familiar with things, the less Sometimes things stick out to you like a sore thumb, but on my first playthrough I, I definitely felt like some of the enemy design was or enemy placement was predictable But that's neither here nor there. Uh, we're gonna go through this whole episode I'm gonna assume assuming I don't die too much that it should take us about an hour on the nightmare difficulty uh, This is not gonna be a hundred percent secrets run just because I don't even know where all the secrets are uh, But I do know where a bunch of them are I figured out a bunch of them myself um, but if you're looking for like a, a, a total hundred percent to tutorial walkthrough this is not going to be it but we should be able to go through the whole thing in one sitting um, but yeah, uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. And uh, before I start exploring around here and, and explaining things, as usual, I want to give a big shout out to my current Patreon backers. So thank you guys for your continued support. Uh, I'd also like to especially thanks uh, thank new backers, Artisan, Talzar, and Timu Asakainen. I probably butchered both of those names, but those folks backed in the last couple of weeks. So thank you guys for backing this channel. Uh, we're going to also flash by the recent live stream Super Chatters. So thank you guys for your direct patronage on the live streams as well. All right, so what is kind of cool about episode five here is that it does have a uh, difficulty selection screen, so it's brand new, whereas, you know, Quake has its own difficulty selection. This one has uh, its own, which is neat. So you just pick uh, easy, normal, or hard, and you can go through that uh, to start uh, the episode. Um, but you can come around here to select Nightmare. Now you'll notice on the bottom it says Skill 2, and I want to make sure that actually changes to Skill 3. Okay, very good, it did. Um, the reason I wanted to uh, check that is that I have had it bug out to where I've gone through the Nightmare Slipgate uh, only to have it still remain at uh, Difficulty 2 or, or Skill Level 2. So if you want to play on Nightmare, the hardest difficulty, which for me is really the only way to play Quake, um, you definitely uh, want to make sure that it's on skill 3, otherwise you will not be playing on Nightmare. So there's a couple secrets. Uh, one is going to be down here. We can actually get the nail gun early, which definitely comes in handy. But we're not going to actually be using the nail gun right now. I'm going to save the ammo for when I really need it. These first couple maps are of the military base style. And uh, they've got some tricky parts to them. But for the most part, you know, you're good with just using the shotgun through and through. Uh, you're going to get the double-barreled shotgun uh, coming up shortly as well. And, uh, but if you're familiar with the, the original Quake, I mean, you can really see that, uh, the, stylistically speaking, anyway, um, these maps really fit in well with, uh, the original style. I mean, the architecture is exactly what you would expect from the original Quake. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually come down here first. Just like that, just to get a secret right there. That was 100 health. 
Now, I did want to mention that we're using a source port that actually I hadn't ever used up until this past week when I started getting into Quake mods. I've been into Doom mods for a while now, uh, and I've been doing uh, several live streams recently on my channel uh, with Doom mods, and it's been a ton of fun. And that kind of got me interested in experimenting uh, with Quake mods again. Back in the day, I mainly, as far as Quake mods are concerned, I mainly just did the ones that were officially available at, at retail. Uh, so like Shrek and the official mission packs and even that uh, to a to a lighter extent that awful X-Men total conversion that uh, just wasn't that much fun to play. Although I have to revisit that one. Uh, maybe it's, I don't know, maybe I just didn't give it enough time or something like that. Um, but we'll de definitely have to try that again. So yeah, I dived into a, a couple of, uh, you know, uh, Quake expansions and mods and things like that. Arcane Dimensions was another one that was suggested to me that I've played a little bit of now after it being recommended to me. Uh, and Dopa was another. Like, I remember this being announced back in 2016 when it came out, and just not bothering to try it. I was just like, oh, that's really cool. You know, I love Quake, I'll have to try that sometime. And I never tried it. Um, but here we are now, a couple of years later, finally giving it a shot. And we're, I'm gonna come down here. Taking damage unnecessarily. See, what I should have done is actually walked across that bridge first to get the uh, the bio suit. Um, but the reason I wanted the suit is to come down here and to get you know a couple of extra items and whatnot. So there's a uh, yellow armor. Yellow armor gives you 150 armor. Uh, your uh, sort of teal armor only gives you 100 armor, and your red armor gives you 200 armor. So the red armor is the best armor in the game. And if you don't want to die quickly when you take damage, uh, you want armor. Armor is amazing in Quake. Now, armor was good in Doom, but not as good as it is in Quake. Uh, armor is very, very handy in Quake. It uh, severely reduces the amount of damage you take from enemies. So it's, it's very good to have that on hand. Now, um... The armor levels sort of vary, so, you know, like the teal armor right here, it gives you 100 armor. Um, but even if you're at under 100 armor with the yellow armor, less than 100 armor with the yellow armor is still more resilient than um, 100 armor with the teal armor. So, you know, not only do you have, uh, you know, higher armor count with, you know, the yellow and the red armor, um, but they also absorb damage much more efficiently. So we're gonna go ahead and just try to mow all these guys down with the quad damage. Quad damage, much like the original Quake, is featured very prominently in this, this episode. And knowing where those are and uh, knowing the best ways to use them is definitely good in helping you um, get through these episodes much easier. I just want to make sure I take out all these guys before I progress. Now, forgive me, I forget what most of the enemy names are um, in Quake. Well, that's not entirely true. I forget what most of the uh, the common uh, names are, like I'm guessing zombie grunts or something like that. But there's the guys that shoot the lasers at you. Um, the ammo packs they drop actually give you uh, cells for uh, the, uh, the Thunderbolts which we're going to get uh, a few maps in. So by the time you get the Thunderbolt for the first time, uh, you should actually have 100% uh, ammo. So let's go ahead and hit this. This should bring the lights on. There we go. So you want to come over here because there's the ring, which makes us invisible. And uh, that's actually pretty handy for this part because these guys won't actually see me. So I can actually take them out one by one. Really with no risk. And I want to go ahead and just take all these guys out too. One by one. And let's see if I can come up like this. And it's running out, unfortunately. I'm going to jump across like that. Interesting, they all jump down. That's cool. One of the things I, I love about Classic Quake is that enemies will jump down. And it was something that you couldn't really experience in Doom. Um, or at least not, you know, the stock base Doom. You know, that id Software crafted back in the day. So, it was really interesting in Quake where enemies would actually jump down from platforms and chase you. 
And I play so much Doom these days that sometimes I have to remind myself that, oh yeah, that's right, we're playing Quake, we're not playing Doom. Enemies can, in fact, do that in Quake. So this map actually has a gimmick at the end that killed me a couple times when I first played it, but I'll just sort of explain how it works once we get to it. And it's coming up here just in just a moment, we're almost at the end of this map. So we got the double-barreled shotgun. And uh, the trap I'm talking about is actually coming up right here. So what I'm going to do is... One thing you can do uh, is use these laser turrets that trigger to kill the enemies for you. Kind of like that. So whenever you, you walk over these uh, discolored tiles, you'll make these lasers fire. There's actually no way to get through that without uh, taking damage or, you know, most likely dying. So what we want to do is flip these switches, which closes them up. And we're just going to jump over like this. Close this one up, and that's that. Now, on to the last section. Alright, so there's a uh, teleporter here. It doesn't really do anything, as far as I'm aware. But it is there in case you wanna... you wanna go back. And actually, what I could do, and I probably should do... ...is go back and try to get some armor and things like that. Make sure we've got max health and armor. So let's go ahead and do that. I know I, I left uh, some teal armor at the beginning. I left... Uh, I know I left some uh, some med kits and whatnot, so... Uh, on the, you know... This is actually technically my fourth playthrough of this, uh, this map, this map pack. So, you know, I'm not as good at this as I am, uh, you know, just stock, stock bare bones Quake, the original four episode campaign. Uh, so, you know, better safe than sorry. It's, it's good for me to backtrack and try to, try to get some health back and armor back if I can. Alright, so let's come back on this other side, see if, oh, no, we're good. Okay, 95, that's good enough. Yeah, so I did want to mention, I, I thought I, I started to touch on it briefly, but got distracted, but uh, I am using a, actually a source port I've never used before up until this last week called, called Quake Spasm. And uh, it seems to replicate Quake uh, pretty faithfully, I mean, right down to your, your menu systems and your options and everything like that. It even used my... Uh, save files from the Steam version of Quake. Uh, so I'm using the Steam version of Quake as, the, you know, the base files. Uh, drag that into my Quake Spasm directory, and it managed to grab all that stuff and settings and control configs and stuff like that. So it even it even relies on those uh, configs, which is pretty cool. Um, graphically speaking, it seems like it's uh, pretty spot on with the original Quake, at least as far as its GL mode is concerned. And um, you know, except now we can uh, boost the resolution up to 1080p, which is what we're running this on. And I, I, when it comes to binding keys and things like that, you still bind keys the exact same way by typing like impulse, um, blah blah blah, and then the uh, the weapon key to uh, to basically bind a key or bind a weapon to a specific key. So it's a very cool source port. I like it a lot, you know, and the reason I talk about this is normally when you guys see me do Quake stuff on this channel, I'm using the Dark Places source port. Um, but I, I built a new computer last year and I never reinstalled the source ports uh, of Quake. You know, I, I dragged, you know, all my Doom stuff over, but I never bothered with uh, re-downloading like Dark Places and things like that. So, you know, being on a bit of a, a Doom binge recently has actually been kind of good for my, my Quake habits because it's gotten me to try some different s source ports I've never tried before. Um, a couple of uh, a couple of uh, expansions I got actually I think require Quake Spasm, which is why I ended up downloading it. But I'm actually pretty happy with it because I do like that it's uh, pretty faithful to the the original Quake in terms of like the menu system and all that stuff, and um, and it definitely looks fairly similar. It looks like it still interpolates the animation. Um, so the original Quake, when you played it on MS DOS or Windows 95. Uh, the animation frames on enemies uh, were actually really choppy. 
Um, but the source ports will usually interpolate uh, that to where it'll basically make the animation nice and smooth. So what I want to do is try to trigger these guys here. And then I can use these spikes to kill them. Just like that. Unfortunately, we'll probably take a little bit of damage in the process. Can I trigger him? There we go. There's gonna be some more guys there as well. Okay, good deal. Well, we took some damage, uh, but I think we'll be okay. But yeah, there is some interesting uh, stage design like that, like what you just saw there with uh, the, the two separate spike turrets coming out, which is pretty cool. I, I did like that when I first saw that. So, kind of like I mentioned, um, some of the, uh... Oops. Let's not die here. Some of the, uh, the enemy placement and whatnot, I felt was pretty predictable. But there are some other things that weren't predictable, like those the spike turrets and whatnot. Yeah, some things were pretty cool, for sure. Let's see if we can jump back up here. And we're gonna come over here. And fall. That's actually not a problem. We're going to just work our way back up. But, uh... Yeah, there's actually some red armor up there, which we, we definitely want right now. And I just took another hit unnecessarily. So I need to focus here. And we'll just, you know, walking along this side I think is easier. And there we go. So now I have to be really careful, because I only have 13% health. And just come down here, this way, back into the water. So the gimmick on this level is just, uh, you know, every time you flip a switch up top, it uh, lowers one of those gates down there. Getting low on health. And I don't think there's any health over here. Yeah, I didn't think so. No secrets that I'm aware of either. Although there will be some secrets coming up, so as long as I don't die, uh, I do have the potential to get my health back. Alright, so back down here is gonna be... I think some zombies are gonna... Are, yeah, going to appear, so we don't want to get hit by them. And this should give us, uh, 100, 100, 100 health. I know there's an actual name for it, but I'm kind of tired right now. And when I'm tired, I forget things. This is kind of an interesting room as well. So you got ogres on this side. Uh, it's probably good to just take them out from this side. It's just easier to deal with. You can you can loop around, but it's safer just to do it from this side. And then there's another knight. Let's go ahead and use the uh, the nail gun here. So I do have uh, weapon weapon functions bound to certain keys. Uh, so like your shotguns and stuff like that, I generally just use with the the number keys up top. I'm using WSAD for, you know, movement and strafe left and strafe right. Um, but I have, um, I have E bound to the grenade launcher, because the grenade launcher is very handy. And it's something that you definitely want to use pretty often in the beginning. And then I have the rocket launcher bound to Q, so those are some of my most used weapons. And then the, the super nail gun, what I'll do is I'll either use the mouse wheel and scroll it up to it, or I will, um, um, I will just try to hit the five keys. It's actually best for me to just kind of scroll up. So I wanted to show you something here. The idea is to just run down like this. Um, but you'll notice I was up top, kind of viewing the top of this platform. You can actually jump onto it. You can just avoid that switch completely. Uh, but I wanted to show you the normal way to do it before I sort of showed you the, uh, the shortcut way to do it. 
and we have to go back here. Some ogres are probably going to appear now. Yep. And remember, with the ogres, they fire grenades at you. And as long as you don't jib them, so jib them, jibbing them is when they basically explode into just, you know, blood and guts. Uh, if you don't jib them, they always drop uh, an ammo pack, which gives you two grenades or two rockets back. Basically the same, same type of ammunition. Uh, but if you get up close, they use their chainsaws on you, so you want to you wanna watch out for that. It's good to get up close to them, that way they don't fire their grenades, but uh, you also want to make sure that uh, you don't get hit by their chainsaw. So these are fiends. Fiends are, they can be tough enemies when you're in uh, really tight spaces. Now, one thing about this, uh, this episode, what I found is that there's a lot of ammo starvation going on. And in, in this episode, I always find myself uh, running out of ammo towards the end. Now, there is a secret here somewhere. Let's see, where is it? Um, because that opens up. And I can't remember where it is. There it is. So a lot of secrets in this game are just activated by, by switches like that. Unfortunately, there's not really much else here uh, to talk about, so... And that's the last secret, actually, so there wasn't anything else to find. So, kind of a weird secret, you just get down and you get some nails and, and that's it. It's nothing special there. So this is where the levels, I think, start becoming more tough, uh, more difficult. Uh, the maps start getting a little bit larger and things like that, but there's a there's a few things you can do just to make life easier So just like in the first quake remember that you can look up and down if you've got free look in this game um, free look I Think was a toggle option in the original quake now it was possible to enable it uh, without having to be toggled uh, through a console command but by default you had to hold down a button to to do free look in here, you can see I'm trying to pick up the teal armor, even though it gives me 100% uh, or 100 armor, it's still weaker than 90 on the red armor, so that's why it's not letting me pick that up. There's going to be some more fiends here as well. But yeah, just remember that you've got free look in this game. With the, with the source port like this, you pretty much got free look by default. Unless that's actually taking my my Steam commands where I had uh, enabled the free look through the console. Hmm, I'll have to think about that. Because it did uh, it did transfer over my settings from the Steam version. This thing can actually crush these knights. It seems to be a little iffy on whether it does or not. A lot of times it'll just crush one of them and not both. And we're gonna go ahead and just try to run through here. You should be able to actually get through that on your own without stopping. As long as you time it just right. But yeah, so, you know, with Quake, unlike Doom, you can, um, you can snipe enemies from up above, you know? Get in, get, get onto a safe platform, camp for a few moments, you know, take out fiends from up top if you can, because they're, they're obviously a lot more dangerous when you're sitting right in front of them. There, there was several, um, several maps in the original Quake where you can do that. And, you know, don't feel guilty doing that. It's just a part of the engine. You know, you're taking advantage of the engine. You know, I'm going to actually do something here. We're going to do this a couple times. I'm going to quick save it just because I don't want to restart the whole level if I die here. This is a really tight jump. Uh, but something I wanted to show you is that in Quake, you can sort of be halfway off the platforms, or in this case, almost entirely off the platforms. So when you see the edges like this, remember that you don't have to jump before. You can wait until you're halfway off and then and then make your jump and that's actually what's intended on this jump right here it actually doesn't look like you can make it um, but if you if you time your jump right and you jump off the edge far off the edge kind of like an old Mega Man or Castlevania game it's the exact same idea um, then you can go ahead and make that jump but I usually like to save it there uh, so again this is my fourth playthrough of this episode and on every other playthrough I've pretty much done that and there's some things that I'm gonna be doing in this playthrough that I've, I've done on every single playthrough up to this point um, because there, there's some really tricky parts on some of these maps uh, that are actually even kind of unfair uh, and I'll point that out as we get into it as we get further into it 
But there are definitely some very unfair parts in the, in this episode. I mean, unless there's some secrets I'm missing that makes them, uh, you know, a whole hell of a lot easier. Which, you know, is entirely the case. And this should probably open up as a secret. Um, but I don't know where the switch is. I'm pretty sure I've gotten that secret before, but for some reason I just can't figure it out right now. And we're taking grenades to the face. Generally, when you get a bunch of ogres like this, you know, you know, two or three ogres, you probably want to use explosives or use your nails to take them out a whole lot faster. But a lot of times when I play Quake, I'm stubborn, and and I'll still try to just use the shotgun just to save ammo because those grenades are pretty valuable later on when the enemy density is greater. And we can actually come back around here to get some nails, which is good. Still good on health, still good on armor. Now, monster infighting uh, is a thing in this game. It's something that, you know, you didn't see a ton in the original Quake. It definitely happened. Um, but it didn't feel like, you know, enemy placement was set in a way where you'd see a lot of monster infighting. It would definitely happen, especially if you played through all four episodes in one sitting. Uh, you would you would absolutely see it. Um, but in this, it feels like with how the enemies are placed in many cases, it happens It happens a lot more often, uh, particularly towards the end of, uh, of this episode. And I'm out of ammo already. This is what I was talking about with the ammo starvation. And, you know, I haven't even missed that many shots. That's the thing. So in the original Quake, I don't really ever run into this problem. Really, ever. Um, but to be fair, in the original Quake, I do know where all the secrets are. Um, there's going to be some ogres appearing here. Alright, let's go ahead and pick up this. And here's our rocket launcher. Let's go ahead and get that. We're gonna actually come uh, come back to see if there's some leftover health as well. Yeah, see, there's a uh, there's a hundred health right there, uh, accessed via a secret, which should be this that opens up, and that would be really handy to get actually if I could if I could get it. But unfortunately, I don't know where that switch is. And I don't want to waste my ammo trying to find it, but that's okay. We got 80 health now, which is uh, which is better than you know 60. And we've got uh, we've got some teal armor. So that's that's good enough for me. Let's go ahead and drop down, and we're gonna go ahead and drop down again. So the rocket launcher is, you know, one of the best weapons in Quake. It's just a really good rocket launcher. It's fast, it's got large, uh, you know, blast radius. And here's a secret right here. And here. And then that, that lowers this bar, or this gate. And we're gonna go ahead and use this quad damage to get through this next section a lot faster. Now this is a tricky section right here. We need to run. We need to book it. There's a thing chasing us right now that'll pretty much kill us in one hit. This is one of those traps that uh, you know you kind of you kind of figure out uh, the hard way. You just you learn by dying, basically. But yeah, I wanted to definitely take advantage of that quad damage there to get through that easier. And remember, the splash damage with the rocket launcher is fantastic, so don't feel like you have to hit enemies dead on. Although, uh, the auto-aim is enabled, uh, and so... Uh, 
it's sometimes like it, the rocket's gonna try to shoot directly on even when you don't really want it to. Now there's gonna be two shamblers up here as well, which makes this last part a little tricky. Uh, one thing you can do, you can try to do, is just like bum rush to the exit. But I'm gonna play it. Uh, I'm gonna play it safer and just try to take these guys out here. So with the shamblers, if you've never played Quake before, they basically lock onto you and just shoot a laser. And as long as you uh, get behind cover, they won't be able to hit you. There we go. And what I like to do is I just like to use my shotgun shells if I can, because... Um, you know, it's the, it's fairly accurate, which is nice, so it's doing, you know, a decent little chunk of damage, and I'm not wasting, you know, like, valuable rockets or nails or things like that. So I basically go undercover, move back out, you know, and do, do a shot or two, maybe three if I'm lucky. Three or four shots is kind of pushing it. You'll probably end up getting hit. And there we go. And also, just remember that we're playing on Nightmare Mode. If you decide to play, try this out and play it on other difficulties, there will be less enemies, there will be easier enemies, there will be less shamblers and things like that. Alright, so we're on Episode 5, Map 5 already. So I'm making decent progress, I'd say. You know, we haven't died yet, which is great. I've gotten close to dying, but we haven't actually died yet, which is always nice. And this is going to come down here. These are actually switches in this game. In the original Quake, those arrows aren't usually switches. Because it actually took me a little while to get used to. In the original Quake, elevators will usually have like a red switch or a big Q icon. Uh, not the arrow like that. Um, but in this, they use those arrow textures for some of the switches, which uh, definitely threw me off. As a long-time classic Quake player, uh, that definitely threw me off. Maybe it was something that was used in the expansion packs, but, you know, it's been a long time since I've played those expansion packs. We're gonna actually learn how to get through those expansion packs again, and we're gonna do some live streams in this channel. Uh, probably not dedicated Let's Plays, um, because the expansion packs will probably take me a while to go through. I'm much less comfortable with them, but uh, we will absolutely, uh, we will absolutely be playing them on this channel. I actually got Scourge of Armagon in the mail today, uh, which is the first expansion pack or first mission pack, as it's called. There's some scrags up here and here. We want to kill these guys first, and then there's a bunch of zombies down below. I'm gonna go ahead and just try to kill all these zombies. There's another rocket launcher right here. So you actually have a couple different ways you can go here. You can come this way. Um, let's go ahead and just kill these zombies while we're at it. Kill that scrag. More zombies here. I'm trying to debate if I want to get that quad damage right now. Or save it. You know, let's go ahead and get it right now. We'll definitely be able to make use of it. So we're, we're going to come down here. There's going to be an entrance to another room. It should be here. Yeah. I'm going to try to kill these knights as fast as possible. Very nice! Thunderbolt. I actually didn't know about that secret. Good stuff. Alright, so the Thunderbolt you don't want to use underwater, you'll kill yourself instantly. Or almost instantly if you've got uh, a lot of health and a lot of armor. Yeah, so one other thing you might actually notice in this playthrough is we're using the original Quake soundtrack. Uh, one of the cool things about Quake Spasm is that it actually supports MP3 music. So as long as you, uh, you know, put some MP3 files named correctly in the, um, the id1 folder and then have a, a, a music subfolder, 
uh, it'll actually read it like it's reading uh, the, you know, the original Quake CD. So we're actually using the original Quake soundtrack here. Uh, which is great. I don't really know what, uh, you know, this episode, you know, intended to use as far as music. I assume the original Quake soundtrack. Uh, so we're, we're going, you know, we're doing that, which is kind of nice. So we do get some audio here. You know, I always think to myself, like, do I want to save that quad damage for these guys? But, you know, it doesn't really matter. The Shamblers aren't that threatening. Oh, jeez. Of course, right as I'm saying that, I had no idea uh, he does that. That's the first time that's happened for me. Normally, they, they both gang up on that doorway. I was like, man, what am I getting hit by? And there's this one. Jeez. I'm screwing myself over here. I think I should just take out this one. Because there aren't any, uh, you know, girders. Okay, there we go. That's interesting. That's the first time that's happened for me. But that that's pretty clever, actually. I didn't know that would happen. So that's actually pretty cool. I like it when I get sort of, like, surprised like that. Okay, I don't want to use that. I don't want to accidentally, uh... fry myself. Now, it is possible to use a Thunderbolt if, like, you're in, you know, knee-deep in water. It's when you're fully submerged that you'll you'll basically kill yourself. But I don't trust it. Especially since we're we're getting close to the end of this map. Um Yeah, this is where there's a bunch of vores. Okay, so let's get behind here. And let's go ahead and just take these guys out one by one. So the thing about the vores is that they have these uh, purple homing uh, spiked balls. And, uh, the second they, they fire it out, if you're in their line of sight, it, it tracks you around corners. So imagine, like, Revenant rockets from Doom 2, uh, except that these will come around corners. Like, no matter what. Guaranteed. Like, there's one right there. So I'm really trying to just, you know, play it really... Not necessarily safe. I mean, yeah, you always have to play it safe with Vores, but I'm trying to conserve my ammo, too. But you'll notice how, like, enemies... A lot of enemies in this game, they don't take that long to kill, even if you're just using your base shotgun. You know, a lot of people complain about the base shotgun in Quake. But the reality is, with its rate of fire, it's actually a solid weapon. Um, which is really handy, especially for, um, you know, playing things safe. You know, it's actually got pretty good accuracy going mostly, most of the way across the screen. Whereas the super, super shotgun's great up close, um, but the regular shotgun is actually pretty solid from, you know, a long range. It's about as close as you'll get to having a sniper rifle in the original Quake. You know, it's got really solid accuracy. Let's go ahead and pick this up, because... Yeah, this is pretty much the exit, I believe. Yeah. Yep, and that's it. Alright. So, this map can be tough as well. Let's go ahead and let these guys come out. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Auto-switching of the weapons is on, so if I pick up a new, uh, a web... If I pick up a weapon, even if I already have it, it automatically switches me to it. Alright, let's go ahead and use our rockets here. So this is actually a level where uh, I'm going to be quick saving a little bit. And you know what? Let's go ahead and just quick save it right now, just to play it safe. I don't, I don't really need the quick save right here, but you know, it definitely wouldn't hurt. It's 
So the Vor's uh, missile is chasing me. That's actually probably one of the tougher rooms, by the way, I will say. And look at that, you know, it's just basically sniping him with my shotgun, which is good. I saved some ammo. Saved my rockets, anyway. But yeah, this is actually probably one of the toughest rooms on Nightmare, because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven enemies, and one of the enemies is a Vor. Um... Go ahead and switch over to my shotgun and rocket launcher. You notice that the uh, the hitboxes in this are actually kind of large. Like you'll you'll actually look to shoot over their heads, and it'll still register as a shot, which is actually really good to know when you're playing through single player in this game. Now this map is actually also our entrance to the secret map. The secret map is got some tricky things to it, without a doubt. And there actually is a way, there it is, to open this up. Now this is a secret to enemies, but uh, the point of the secret is to actually help us out later on in the map. I should actually save the thunderbolts, I'm going to need it for later. Ooh, there's a vor. I didn't think there was going to be a vor there. So, when you hear the vor fire its, uh, its missile, you want to wait until it's exploded. Because if it's not exploded, it's going to track you immediately. And you'll, you'll just take it to the face, and that's, that's no good. Alright, let's go ahead and use our rockets here. Now, one thing I like to do with the ogres, actually, is... Make sure I don't jib them. Um, but also, this wall is going to eventually come down... Um, ...in the last section of the level. And so, we basically just killed all those ogres, and when the wall comes down, there's there's no danger. But yeah, I like to try to not jib the ogres. If you shoot them and do too much damage with, uh, you know, uh, rockets or grenades... ...explosives, basically. Um, they'll jib and... Uh, their ammo pack will get destroyed with it. So, if you want to try to replenish your rockets and things like that, you want to make sure that you're not jibbing the ogres in this game. You can jib everything else. Uh, just don't jib the ogres. Alright, so we're going to come through here. be some monster infighting happening there. Oh, no. Usually there is. Usually the Vor triggers one of these knights. And this is actually where I'm going to save it again. Because... We have to fight three Shamblers head-on on this part. So, I'm not a huge fan of this part right here. It's probably one of, I think, one of the... ...worst designed parts of this episode, but... I am on Nightmare, so I can't really complain. You know, Nightmare is supposed to be hard.
One thing you can try to do is you can try to just run past the, uh, the Shamblers and trigger all the other enemies and then let the other enemies come in and then some monster infighting will, will, will occur. Hopefully. Anyway, not always, but hopefully. Um, but, you know, really it's not that bad. Now that this is my fourth playthrough, I'm getting the hang of how to deal with some of these sections. So we, we actually ended up doing that without dying, which was nice. But still. It always scares me when I come to this part. And 75 yellow armor is still better than 100 teal armor. And apparently 63 yellow armor is still better than 100 teal armor. It really goes to show the, the different level of strengths in uh, the armor sets. There's gonna be a vor up here. And there's some quad damage. We're gonna go ahead and use it. And I wanna go ahead and keep using it. that. Let's go ahead and come back here. Because there's a secret right here, which opens up this door, reveals this fiend, but we're gonna get some more... I think yellow armor might be up here. Which, as you know, yellow armor is pretty solid. I mean, yeah, it's not, it's not red armor, but it's still pretty great. And this is going to take us to the end. Uh, so what we want to do, I just want to wait for this to come all the way around. There are two exits here. We want to actually take the second exit, because that's going to be the entrance to our secret map. And this wall is going to come down just like that. So you can see those three ogres would have been there, uh, which would have made life a little more difficult. So this is the main exit. Let's go ahead and skip that so I can show you the secret map. And that's it. So this is going to be episode 5, map 8. I'm going to go ahead and try to use our nails for this part. I actually wasted that yellow armor. I didn't want to walk over it. I knew I was going to take a hit, and I wanted to save it for later. Uh-oh. That's not good. That's actually going to put us in a bad, bad position for the rest of this map. Hopefully that knight would actually go after that vor. Nope. This map actually has quite a bit of ammo starvation going on. So if I can get the monsters... Ow! See, we got hit by it. You just want to make sure you're behind cover, like, before the Vor uh, fires its missile.
Alright, got some health back at least. Oh, what? We still got hit by that? You can see what I'm talking about about the ammo starvation. Oh, there's another four right over there. I mean, it's definitely a tricky stage. I mean, I like it for that. I, li I like it that it's, you know, it's not a walk in the park. There we go. There's gonna be another Vore up top, actually. But let's come over this way. And hope that we can get some ammo. There's some more rockets. So they're fighting each other now. You can actually hear them. There we go. Alright, we're doing better now. We've got ammo. Another rocket launcher. You can jib the knights all you want because they don't drop ammo. Alright, so we're actually nearing the end of this map already. But we're going to also go ahead and do another quick save. And you can really see how if I had played uh, my cards right in the beginning, I would I would have another yellow armor I could pick up. Uh, but unfortunately, I do not. So there's this right here. Which will give us uh, some invulnerability. Ow. Which we're going to need. And uh, we're going to go ahead and quick save it. Right here. And let's switch back over to our shoddy. We have to fall right here. This is kind of uh, some troll design as well. I'm not the biggest fan of. The first time I got here, I fell down into the lava, and you can't get out. Protection's almost burned out. Okay, good. You know, we're just gonna play it safe. we go. And we're gonna wait. And that's a tight jump right there. Now there's also gonna be a shambler right here. So what I want to do is trigger the shambler. Okay, I just heard him. And then just kill the shambler by normal means, basically. Now we're just waiting. I hear him. Yeah, it's a good shambler. <laughs> All right. Ooh, that was close. I almost fell off. That would have been really bad. We would have had to do the whole thing over again. So that's the the secret map. And this is going to be our final regular stage. The next stage is the last map. And this is kind of a troll section as well. You need to hit these switches. 
Otherwise, these things come in and crush you. So, I died a couple times the first time I played this map as well, because of that. Alright, so these open up as well. You have to shoot them. Alright, so we're probably going to go up that elevator. So let's go ahead and do that. Switch over to our super nail gun. The super nail gun is great to have if you're not sure what's coming up. Because it can make mincemeat of just about anything very quickly. So if you get cornered, um, you know, you might actually be able to survive if you got the super nail gun in hand. You might not survive if you got the super shotgun in hand, though. It's got some good grenades back. And there's gonna be a Vore right there. Let's go ahead and just use the rockets. Oh! I was in its line of sight when it fired out. So the Vores are absolutely brutal in Quake. You know, imagine them to be kind of like... I don't know, the Arch Vials in Doom, where as long as they've got a lock-on on you and you're in their sight, you get hit. Except it's kind of that combined with the logic of the Revenants, where they've got these homing missiles. So it's kind of like, oh, you were in its line of sight, you're gonna get hit no matter what, even if... <laughs> but, but unlike the Arch Vials, even if you go behind a wall, you're still gonna take the hit because the, the rocket's gonna fly around the screen. Uh, let's see if we can trigger. There's a couple ogres down here. Yep, got them. So, you know, you can take advantage of the engine and the enemy placement. When you know these maps, you can, you can basically trigger enemies early. And basically there's a set of secrets right here as well. This secret is kind of a risk versus reward thing. It gets kind of risky because you have to deal with uh, some vores. Which sometimes is not entirely worth it. Alright, that was worth it. And it also skips you past these traps, which is nice. There's also going to be some ogres up top. So up here. I've gotten trolled by those guys multiple times before. It's very easy to. You gotta watch out for the zombies as well. Because if you don't kill them, they'll come back to life. Or not really come back to life, they come... Because you haven't killed them, they're not dead yet. Um, they'll come back up, they'll stand back up, and as they're standing back up, they'll get in the way of whatever projectiles you're using. You know, rockets or just regular guns. So you especially don't want to have that happen when you're trying to throw rockets across the screen. Because the rocket will end up blowing up prematurely and doing lots of damage to you. There's a couple of ores up here as well. Some fiends down here. So it's basically opening up opening this gate right here. And there's also a secret right there, which raises up this very steep staircase. 
which uh, allows us to get some quad damage. Alright, so there's actually going to be one kind of cool secret to show off. Um, it's kind of neat that they included this in this episode, because it's already in the original Quake. But, we're going to get to see it again in this so-called Episode 5. So you basically go behind that exit teleporter, and coming around here, you see the dope fish. So, the dope fish is something that you see in uh, the original Quake as well, and it's kind of like an Easter egg in a bunch of games over the years. Um, the Doughfish was an enemy in Commander Keen. One of the Commander Keen games, one of the later ones, I believe. And, uh... So, that's that's just kind of funny. I'm trying to figure out... There we go. We finally got it. There we go. Alright, so we come back, and then we can go ahead and exit. And, uh, this is pretty much gonna put us on the final stage. So, let's see if we can do this on our first try. Alright, so first we're going to come around here because there's some yellow armor. We want to try to pick up all these weapons and ammunition first. So some nails, and we want to come back up because we're suffocating. It doesn't take that long for you to start suffocating in this game. Uh, there's also going to be some quad damage here. There's going to be some shamblers, just like that. And we're going to try to take this next part as fast as we can. We've got Vores. More Shamblers. More Vores. And our claw damage is worn out, so let's go back. Make sure we've killed this Vor. We haven't. And we're gonna get hit by its missile. Ah, I hate that thing. And has the Shambler... Woo! The Shambler has followed us. Well, this is a bad start, actually. This is a really bad start. Because there's not much health in this map. At all. So we kind of just, like, screwed ourselves there. And what I'm going to see is if I can trigger some of these guys. No. You want to get near this spike turret and just time our movements. Tricky. Very, very tricky. Alright, so we need to actually come down here really quick. Uh, this is on a timer. And this is gonna be tough. So what I like to do here... Actually, you know what I can do is I can... kill some of these guys. But what I like to do is actually just run past them and trigger the shamblers over there. And the shamblers will hopefully instigate monster infighting with uh, the knights up there. And then they'll just try to kill each other, basically. The Shamblers are by far the most dangerous enemies in the game if you have no cover. So, it, you know, 
in order to destroy the shamblers with ease, you really want to resort to cheap tactics like that. Like, do not feel bad to use cheap tactics against the shamblers. You know, they're not the cyber demons from Doom, where you, you know, you can be right in their face and still dodge their attacks. Uh, it doesn't work like that. And there's there's Quake. And that's the whole game. We just ran through the entire episode five dimension of the past. Uh, this was actually, you know, I didn't mention it in the beginning, but this was created by a, a Machine Games employee who, uh, you know, I worked with the studio that created the modern Wolfenstein games, like uh, the New Order and the Old Blood uh, and whatnot. So, uh, this was act this is actually an episode that came from a developer in the industry, which was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, it was made available for free. I don't know if this was actually official from id Software or not, but... Um, I think a lot of people liken it to being somewhat official because of the the source of who it came from. You basically had a studio or a guy from a studio that made it, and uh, you know they've been handling a bunch of the, you know, it's software Wolfenstein games recently. So it's really cool to see uh, another episode. Uh, even, whether it's official or not, I think it holds up pretty well. I think it's a uh, pretty well designed episode. Again, some of the enemy placement can be a little uninspired. You know, you, you'll have just groups of enemies, like, you know, three knights back to back, and you know, just bunched together like that. So, but, I mean, if you're like me and you play it fast, it's not really a big deal, because you you have to deal with the enemies no matter what. And, um, you know, you have to know what you're doing in order to, uh, to survive. So, but it's a fun episode. I definitely recommend checking it out. If you guys are interested in checking out this uh, this Quake episode, I will link to uh, a place where you can get it in the description box. There's a good website, uh, very similar to Doom World, but for Quake stuff, where um, you know it's it's got uh, basically uh, a library of Quake uh, levels and, and mods and things like that, and with reviews and screenshots and, and stuff like that. Uh, so very cool stuff. I'll have a link in the description box below. So yeah, uh, like I said, I'll be back with some more Quake stuff in the future. Um, I did get the first mission pack again, and um, I'm going to be getting the uh, the second mission pack shortly as well. And so we'll try to go through those. I'll probably do some live streams on that. And I'll probably end up also doing uh, the original PC Quake on Nightmare. I'll probably do a live stream of that, since it's probably been about a year since I've streamed it. And I'm on better hardware now, so we might as well stream it again. Um, just for fun, so that should be a pretty easy playthrough and a fun stream. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure I'll have other Quake stuff up my sleeve eventually, like I still need to do the N64 version of the game. We did the Saturn version on stream a few weeks back, that was kind of a nightmare, but uh, that's a topic for another day. But I'll definitely, uh, you know, through experimenting with these other Quake mods and things like that, we'll maybe try to experiment more with uh, new map sets and things like that. And uh, so maybe you guys will see some Let's Plays in the future of, uh, you know, newer Quake content, so. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I don't really have anything else to say. Like I said, there there is no ending text, so you just get thrown right back to uh, the screen, unfortunately, so. I don't think it's my uh, my source port, but if it is my source port and, and you're familiar with this, and if it does have ending text and you're, you're just playing it in stock vanilla Wind Quake, uh, let me know down in the comments below. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you're brand new to my channel, uh, click that subscribe button. I've got a ton of Let's Plays on this uh, channel and many more to come if that's your cup of tea. Uh, for everyone else, thanks for your usual support. Also, if you guys like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Uh, either one actually helps my videos appear in search results, and uh, so that is much appreciated. And uh, until the next video, guys, take it easy.